Hey everybody, Charles Simmons here. And for about a year, I've been giving online classes, just like many other trainers and coaches around the world. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the tools that I use for taking my online classes to the next level. Let's go. Since the beginning of the pandemic, teaching online classes has gone from being a luxury to a necessity for many trainers and coaches. Now I've been optimizing my system so I can give my clients the best online experience. And one of the ways that I've done this is to make my classes look more interesting by giving my camera the ability to track my movements. So today I'm gonna show you how my system is set up. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to see more videos like this. So let's get started. Now, it goes without saying that when you're live streaming, video conferencing, or giving classes, you should have the fastest internet connection you can afford and to connect to your router with a cable in order to have the most stable connection possible. Now, I also use a mirrorless camera, a USB capture card, a gimbal, a wireless video transmitter, an HDMI splitter, a wireless microphone system, a mobile device, an audio interface, and an assortment of cables. So let's talk about the camera. Now, lots of vloggers and gamers use mirrorless cameras for live streaming. Now, my camera of choice is the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. Now, I use the Elgato CamLink 4K as my capture card. Now, the heart of my camera rig is the DJI RSC2 gimbal with the Raveneye wireless video transmitter. Now, I bought the Pro Combo Kit, which includes the gimbal, the transmitter, and all of the cables you need to make everything work. However, I did end up buying some extra cables in order to hook up the camera and the gimbal to my next piece of gear, an HDMI splitter. I use a one in, two out active splitter, meaning that it requires power, which I can draw from either my computer or from a second display. Now for my mobile device, I use either an iPad or an iPod Touch. Now I'm an iOS user, and in my experience, the iOS version of the DJI Ronin app, which is the app used to control the gimbal, works a little bit better than the Android version. Now for my microphone, I use the Rode Wireless Go 2, a lavalier mic and a headset mount. Now the Wireless Go 2 is probably the best wireless mic system on the market for the price. I love the Rode system because it's very small and I can connect it directly to my computer via USB, which gives me a better sound quality than if I connect it using the TRS jack into the headphone plug. Now I use Zoom for my classes, but this setup will also work with Skype, Microsoft Teams, or any other video conferencing software. Now for my audio routing, I use an app called Loopback. Now it's Mac only and it's awesome. But if you're on a PC, you can use apps like Voice Meter, Jack, or others. I also use two media players, QuickTime Player and the Music app. I'll explain why a little bit later. Finally, I use a dedicated audio interface with my speakers connected to it to hear everything that's going on. Now, you can use pretty much any audio interface, or you can use speakers connected to your computer via Bluetooth. So now I'm gonna show you how I set up my camera and my gimbal. Now, keep in mind that there are tons of great videos online that go into detail on how to set up the RSC2 with the Raven Eye transmitter. Now, I'm just gonna show you very quickly how I did it. One of the coolest features of the RSC2 and the Raven Eye is the active track feature, where the gimbal automatically follows your movements. Now, in the previous version of the gimbal, you needed to mount the mobile device onto your camera and engage active track through the app. Now, with the Raven Eye, you can use the camera itself for the tracking and use your mobile device to remote control the gimbal. So before I mount the camera onto the gimbal and connect it to the Raven Eye, I make sure that I turn on clean HDMI out on my camera so that I won't see the display elements on the picture I send to Zoom. Now I connect my cables.
Now, I do have some cables hang off of the camera, so I made sure that my connection cables are as short and as light as possible so as to minimize the stress on the gimbal motors. So first, I connect my camera to the input of my splitter using a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Next, I connect one of the outputs from the splitter to the Raven Eye using an HDMI to mini HDMI cable. Then I connect the other output from the splitter to the cam link via a normal HDMI cable. Then I connect my cam link to the computer. Make sure that the cables are long enough so as not to interfere with the movement of the gimbal. Now finally, I fasten the splitter to the handle of my gimbal using two cable ties made of Velcro so that they're easy to take on and off and they're reusable. Now it's very important that you attach and secure all of the cables before you balance your gimbal. I balance my gimbal Then I mount the rig onto a tripod. Now you could use a small table or a box, just make sure that it's stable. Now I turn everything on and tune my gimbal. Now I wanna set up my audio. First, I connect my wireless mic system to my computer via USB. As I said, I use a lavalier mic connected to a headset mount but you could use any headset mic as long as it has a mini TRS connector, which I plug into the transmitter of my wireless go. So now I'm gonna show you how I route all of my audio into Zoom using an app called Loopback. It's my favorite app for routing audio on my computer. Now, even though it's pretty expensive, it does the job quickly and easily. Here's how it works. First, I'm going to open the Loopback app and create a virtual audio device to use in Zoom. Now here in the main window, there are three columns. The sources column, where I add all of my audio apps and input sources. The output channels column, where I route those sources. And the monitors column, where I can add output devices so that I can hear what's going on. As you can see, I've already created a virtual device where everything is set up but I'm gonna create a new virtual device to show you how it all works. To create a device, I click the plus button in the lower left corner of the window next to new virtual device. A new device shows up in the list, so I'll give it a name. As you can see, a new widget shows up in the sources column called pass through. Now, I don't need that right now, so I'm going to delete it because I'm going to create three audio sources manually. The first one is my wireless mic. I click on the plus button next to sources, then I scroll down to audio devices to find my mic, then bam, the mic widget shows up in the sources column and is automatically routed to channels one and two in the output channels column. Now you see that only channel one is receiving audio signal from my mic, not channel two. Now this is because I'm only using one transmitter with my wireless system and it's in mono. So I have to route the mic signal to both channels of the output widget. First, I'll delete the connection cable on channel two of the wireless go widget. Then I'll click on channel one and create a virtual cable connection to channel two of the output channel widget. Now I'm able to hear the mic signal on both output channels. Next, I'll create another source widget for QuickTime Player. Now, when I give online fitness classes, I run a workout cue video with the soundtrack on a second monitor so my clients can hear the workout music and I can instruct which exercises we're doing in the workout. I use my second monitor kind of like a teleprompter as well as a control center for all of the open apps I use in my classes for when I need to quickly adjust volume levels, for example. So I click on the plus button next to sources. Now, since I have QuickTime Player already running in the background, I can scroll down to Running Applications, select the QuickTime Player, and now it shows up in the Sources column. 
automatically routed to output channels one and two. Finally, I wanna create a third source widget for my music app. Now, when I start a Zoom meeting, I usually like to have some background music running while my clients wait for me to jump onto the call. Now, I click the plus button in the sources column once again, but when I scroll down the list, I don't see the music app because it's not running yet. So I go to select application, run a search for the music app in the finder window, double click on the app, and now it shows up in the sources column as well, already rooted to the output channel widget. Now, as you saw in the previous virtual device I created, there was a monitor widget for my audio interface, but it was turned off. Now in loopback, you don't necessarily need to create a monitor widget if your audio output source is already set up at the system level. My audio interface is already my main output device, so I don't have to set it up again in loopback. Instead, I choose one of my source widgets, click on options, and see that mute when capturing is turned on. Now I turn this off in all of my app sources. That way I can hear the audio over my speakers as well as having it rooted to my output channels, which we'll configure in Zoom in just a minute. That's it. Now the great thing about Loopback is that it's always running in the background even when you quit the app. The virtual device I created is always active. So now that I have my audio and video configured, let's set up Zoom. First, I'm gonna show you how I adjust the audio settings. I open up Zoom, go to the audio settings, and go to where it says speaker. In the drop-down menu, I choose the device that is hooked up to my speakers. So it's either my audio interface directly or same as system. In the microphone drop-down menu, I choose the name of the virtual device I created in loopback. Watch the input level meter to make sure that Zoom is getting a signal from the virtual device. Now the next setting is very important. Under Music and Professional Audio, I turn on Show In Meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. Also, since I'm connected to my router with a cable, I leave the high fidelity music mode on, as well as echo cancellation and stereo audio. So, when you enable turn on original sound in the main Zoom window, the audio algorithm in Zoom will be bypassed, letting your clients hear uncompressed, unprocessed sound. Now, let's set up the video. I go to the video settings and select the cam link as my video source in the camera drop-down menu. Remember that I have my camera signal split between the capture card and the Raven Eye. Now, because I have enough bandwidth in my internet connection, I leave HD turned on. But in situations where I don't have enough bandwidth or I'm experiencing low quality video or dropouts, I turn HD off. Now to lower the stress on my processor, I make sure that I have Use Hardware Acceleration for Receiving Video turned on in the Advanced Settings window. Now once I'm sure that the video feed is working, I can finally connect my mobile device to my rig. Now, if you look on the side of the Raven Eye, you'll see a Wi-Fi name and password. Now I open the preferences on my mobile device and locate the Wi-Fi setting. I make sure the Raven Eye is turned on, then it'll show up as a Wi-Fi device. Keep in mind that you have to have a direct Wi-Fi connection to the Raven Eye. You cannot use it on the same network as your computer. I select the Raven Eye and enter the password. I now open the Ronin app on my device, and after a couple of seconds, I should see what my camera sees on my display. There are a couple of different ways to control the gimbal using the app. The fastest way for me to center myself in the frame is to use force mobile mode. I turn this on, and then I can remote control the gimbal by moving the device. Now, once I've centered myself in the frame, I drag my finger to select myself on the screen. Now this turns on active track, and now the camera will follow my movements. When I start my Zoom session, my clients will see the same picture that I see on my mobile device, but without all of the display elements. Now I can move freely in the frame and the camera will track me. Now keep in mind that the gimbal has a battery life of about 14 hours, and the Raven Eye lasts about three and a half hours. Now that's plenty of time 
to one or maybe two online classes in a row. So make sure that everything is fully charged. So there you have it, my setup for giving online classes. Now, having a camera that follows my movements without needing a cameraman adds a new dimension to my classes and makes coaching online more interesting and more fun for my clients and for me. Now, if you have any questions about my setup, leave a comment below. And if you found some value in this video, remember to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Now, as you know, I am all about helping people get stronger, healthier voices and bodies. So if you're looking for a program that incorporates all of the vocal and fitness tips that I give you on this channel, please check out my Vox Body Workout by clicking the link here in the video or in the description below. See you guys soon.